Hey, what's up guys? It's Seb from Workbench, and today we're gonna continue our exploration of pop-up books. This week, we're gonna continue our exploration of pop-up books by creating a few different setups. These are based on what we did the last time. So if you haven't seen part one, there's a link down below. This first setup's a parallelogram. Here's what it does. Let me show you how to set it up. Now I'm reusing the setup I did last week with a few little alterations. So I kept the pages, the page controls, and all of that stuff. I'm gonna create three nulls, one here, one here, and one here. And then I'm gonna drop them into my setup, the two for the right page. I'm gonna take this one, and I'm gonna make it the parent of this one. And then the one that sits on the left side, I'm just gonna put it in here. And then I added an extra null, just in case I want to take this into After Effects and map something onto the page. It's important to note that in order for it to bend properly, the distance between this null and this null is the same distance that you have from the center of the page to this null. Now in this case, I'm drawing a curve between these nulls with a tracer. Uh, how you do that is you create a tracer, which you can find in the MoGraph menu, and then you put it in the order that you want. So I've got R control, R tip, and L control, which is my left side. And then you set the target mode to connect all. So that'll draw a line between each one of these nulls. If I turn it on, I've got a line between the nulls. And then I'm just doing an extrude to create my plane. So I took my setup from last week and I created a new range mapper and it's in this espresso right here. I have left side controller in here, and then I have its user data node open, and I'm sticking that into a range mapper, mapping 0 to 90, 90 to 0, in other words, I'm flipping it, and I'm mapping that into left side controller, which is this one, and then I'm taking the output of that, and I'm making a range mapper, and I'm mapping that 0 to 90, and 0 to 180. What this is doing is it's taking the output of my slider control and mapping it to the rotation values of our R control. It's also rotating the second null here and keeping the distance between the two. You can see the distance stays the same. Next, I went into my full control espresso and I dragged in L control, which is my other side null. And then I took the output of my full control which is the slider, and I created this range mapper that takes the value negative 90 all the way to 90. And then I'm mapping it 90 to negative 90. And then I created the spline, starts at 90, goes down to negative 90, and then goes back to 90. So, and that's just the rotation of this. You can see it's 90 here, goes to negative 90, and then when it goes back, it goes to negative 90 again. Now, technically, you don't need to do this, but I'm doing it because I wanted to have a null here if I wanted to bring this into After Effects, and I have to do that. Otherwise, the rotation wouldn't, wouldn't come into After Effects properly. That's it for the Espresso setup. I took this line, or rather the tracer object, and I added an extrude to it, and then... I added a cloth surface to give it thickness. Now the intention obviously is to add something to this. This is just the mechanism to pop things off the page. So I'm going to show you a couple different setups for these parallelograms. So firstly, here's a symmetrical version. And the setup is the same way. I created two nulls. In this case, the nulls are equal distance. It's symmetrical. The bend is in the direct center of the page. Let me show you what that espresso looks like. So inside full control, I dragged in left page control and right page control, and I created two range mappers. The one for left page control goes negative 90 to 90, and then I'm mapping 45 and negative 90. So we're starting at 90, going to negative 45 and then back to 90. And then on the other range mapper, which is the right page control, I'm doing the exact same thing only 
opposite. So I'm mapping 90 and negative 45. So we're starting at 90, going to negative 45, and then back to 90. And you can see this does it works exactly the same way as the other one. And then the third one is an asymmetrical one. Now for this one, you can see the bend is off the center, but it still bends down into the page. And the setup's exactly the same, except for the values are slightly different. So I did the same thing as before. I dragged in left page control, right page control, created a range mapper for each. So the left page control, the range mapper is exactly the same as the previous setup, but there are some different values in the right page control. So if you look at this range mapper, the input value is the same, and the output value is 90, and then going down to negative 10. So we're starting at 90, going to negative 10, and then back to 90. And you can see how this works. In this setup, instead of using an extrude object, I'm using the tracer and a rectangle inside of a sweep. I have one more setup to show you. In this case, we're creating a parallelogram that is symmetrical. However, you can see it pops off the page on both sides, folds in on itself. Let's see. Let me show you how this one's set up. It's set up basically the same as the previous setups, except for we have more nulls this time around. Obviously, we have two nulls here and a null in the center, and then I added a null in the center of each of the straight sections. Again, if I want to add something in After Effects, I can do that. Let me take you through the Espresso setup. So I went into full control, and I have only had to drag in three things to make this setup work. I brought in R control, L control, and then I have number four here, which is attached to this leg. We're controlling its rotation so that we can control where the center point is moving. So our control, I created a range mapper just like before. This one goes from 178 to 90. And then I took the output of that and I added a multiply node and I'm multiplying it by negative one. So it's the reverse for the other side and I'm putting that into L control. And then I created another range mapper for number four, which is this one right here. And that one is getting a value of zero and negative 87.5. So we're going negative 87.5 to zero, and then back to negative 87.5. Now these are the values that work for my setup. Obviously you can play with them, and depending on the size you use or the angles that you're setting up, those values will change. But the basic setup will be exactly the same, it's just the value is a little bit different. And that's it for this control. You can see how that one works. Now I have a bonus setup. Essentially it creates a object that will shoot forward and back and fold into the page. And it's based off of this setup. The idea on this setup is that when it opens, the graphic shoots up. That's why I'm using an arrow, just to show you the movement. You can see it starts off at the bottom and it moves up. So this is an alteration of the last setup. So the setup is exactly the same with the addition of the moving forward. So let's take a look at that espresso. So if you look here, I'm, I added these two nodes. This is position on two and position on four. And that's what's creating this forward movement. And I'm going from 20 to negative 20. Four is this one, and two is that one. And you can see, if we scrub forward, you can see it's moving forward and back. So that's about it for these setups. You can use them in conjunction with the other setups that we did, as well as adding them to the setup we did last week. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, because we do a video every week. If you have any comments or questions, leave in the comments down below. If you'd like to help support what we do, 
go to patreon.com forward slash workbench and check out the blog at workbench.tv. As always, I'm Sev, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>